the amount of footage that movies generate now is, you, and you have to go through it, because there's nothing worse than showing the director a sequence, and he says, like, is that the best shot? And we go into it, and he finds out it isn't the best shot. You haven't done your job. The first cut, cut, the first cut, the, the first cut, cut, first, the, the first, first cut, 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 cut. I'll just teach you simple cuts to start with. What was, what was the hardest uh, se sequence to edit in, uh, in Jack Reacher? It was probably the rock quarry shootout sequence. Because everything's fucking black around lights. Yeah, and uh, it, there, there just wasn't a lot of time to shoot it the way Chris wanted it. And he only had a few days because it was a sequence that was sort of added kind of at the last minute. Mm -hmm. And Chris went in there and sort of shot you know, what he had, and then the rest of it he sort of directed through second unit. You know, he got all the principles and he got the main structure done, but he didn't go in, he didn't have time to go in and get his pieces. So that one, because it took, it was over, shot over a course of a couple weeks. And that was probably, that probably had the most challenge to it. But I thought it turned out really good. It was all done. I, it's really well executed. Yeah. Really well executed. Yeah. A couple sequences in there that are really fun. The car chase, the muscle car car chase, is gripping. It's it's gripping shit. Like not shaky cam. Not shaky cam. No. It just it was like the first car chase I'd seen in a movie in a long time where I went, yeah. this is just a fucking kick-ass car chase. It was refreshing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was really refreshing. And because I, it's, you start to question whether or not, as an audience member, you're still susceptible to getting a rush if it isn't. Right, like right, that, you right, know, But right. this, was, this was pretty patient, and it sort of builds its tension. Very much a sort of a throwback to bullet type of car chase, his French connection. Yes, yes. Yeah. It, felt, it, felt like, it felt like a, like a Friedkin, yeah. that style of car chase. Chris took that approach. One of the reasons why is because Tom did all his own driving in that car chase. There's all no, of it. There's no stuntman in that car chase. Chris would work all night with, or all day with Tom on first unit, and then they'd sort of go in and they'd do the car chase at night, and they were working 20 hour days. And Tom did all the driving, and so he says, if I got Tom Cruise driving this car, we're going to know it. <laughs> That's one of the reasons it was shot that way. And when you got the footage, I just well, first of all, it's right up my alley. Right. And you just say, "This is gonna rock." And you just let it rip. I just let it rip. And was, is there any? Is there ever any insecurity about cutting it because it doesn't fit the current style so much? Is there ever any like amount of like you know nervousness? You know, like you know. It was sort of it was designed that way, and I just sort of perpetuated the design. I see what you're saying. Yeah, interesting you know, that you say that. Yeah. You perpetuate because if it's not shot, if it's not shot that way, it's pretty hard to make it that way. Quick cuts and everything, and and plus, the shots are so great. They use this thing called the uh, pursuit arm, which is a camera crane. Yeah, yeah. you know what it is. Yeah. Mounted on top of a Porsche Cayenne, I think. And the cameras would just go right into it, right. doing 40, 50 miles an hour. It's like, yeah, why would, I'm not going to cut out of that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shots themselves had their own energy. Right. Another sequence in the movie um, that should be talked about, because this one is, it, you know, it was like right on the line between kitschy and goofy. And I know what you're going to say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. I believe it's the bathroom sequence. Yes. You know, there comes a part in almost all kinds of movies, genre movies, that you got to let the audience know it's okay to laugh. Right. And I think that's an instance of that. Yeah. Well, it was it's fucking funny. Hilarious. It was fucking hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. Because i got to be honest, I, if that was written down, right. I think many a director would have been really, really scared of that sequence because how do you believe that these two numb nuts Knuckleheads. with a baseball bat and a crowbar can't and, and, and Tom Cruise is already stunned and basically knocked right, out in the right. bathtub can't finish him off right but the geography of the scene about how they get caught in the window and one guy pulling on the other and the other guy pulling on the other and 
you know, yeah, yeah. knocking each other out. It, it it was like that was a throwback to silent movies. Yeah. It was a throwback to, you know, like Three Stooges. Right. It was it was a throwback to a lot of things we've seen before, but it was like a reinvention of it, like a new invention of it. Yeah. And wonderfully executed. And it was very funny. Yeah, I thought it I thought it fit well in the movie. Was it a challenge to cut that or did it just sort of fit together nicely? It was it, was it a challenge? I don't I remember having a great time doing it. You know, the pieces seemed to all be there. One other sequence. Oh yeah, the fight outside, the bar fight outside. <laughs> He's going to get a smile. What, tell me why the smile comes on your face. It's just again is there's not a lot of cuts in it. Yeah. There's just enough. And again, Tom doing all his own stunts, and it just kicked ass. <laughs> he just dropped those guys. That's right. He's like, how's this going to work, right? Is it your first punch to the balls? Uh, what in my career? No, I mean <laughs> the physical shot of. Tom punching a guy in the balls. Was it my first? Was it the first time you had to edit in? I don't believe so. Okay, you, you've, <laughs> you've cut, you've cut yeah, shots to the balls yeah. before. Yeah. What was your first shot to the balls as an editor? You'd think I'd remember that, wouldn't you? Yes. I, I don't. <laughs> Have you ever been fired off a of job? No, I know. I, that's pretty good, Kevin. Yeah, it really is. I'm, I'm due, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> as everybody gets fired. Right, right, right. Um, let's go back. We, that was we just talked about basically your last your <coughs> last time, uh, Jack Reacher. Are you cutting something right now? Yeah, um, doing forty two, which is the oh beautiful looking trailer by the way. Yeah, you didn't cut the trailer, did you? I did not cut the trailer, but, but it's beautiful looking. But it, it's it's like they managed to take the story that could otherwise be like a HBO history movie, you know, right. and make it really. Into I, a feature. I, I've I've reteamed with my great buddy Brian Helgeland. Right. Wrote it and directed it. Right. And it's just it's it's a movie. I'm. It turned out great. I'm really proud of it. And it's it's a it's a pretty good movie. Who plays? Um, Chad Bozeman. Cha uh huh. He plays Beautiful Jackie drama. Robinson. Yeah. yeah. Harrison Ford plays Branch Rickey. And in a very unusual he owns, character for he him. He owns the part. Right. Yeah. It's it's a way that we uh, we probably haven't seen Harrison for uh, in a while. It kind of also has like a real like not rock and roll vibe to it, but like a, like a like a fresh vibe to it. Well, it's it's been shot, you know, it's dealing with baseball in a way, and you know, Brian keeps telling me it's not a baseball movie because it's again it's a love story, uh -huh. and it's him overcoming the adversity of of what it was like then. Right. But it's funny because, you know, they, they shot it all in uh, Georgia. Right. And in stadiums that don't exist anymore. Ebbets Field, Polo Grounds, they tore them down 50 years ago. And so they shot all green screen, a real baseball diamonds, but all green screen backgrounds. Uh, X-Men. Yes. You were the cutter of X-Men? No, no, I was third. Third cutter. Who's the lead cutter? Uh, Steve Rosenblum. Uh-huh. Second was John Wright. Uh-huh. And then I was brought in as the third one. Okay. Are you saying you were brought in to recut? No, no, no. I it was all. We were all a three-editor team. So did you guys ever... Okay, so let's talk about editing in teams, because this is something that, you know, that... Um, well, first of all, I'd like to say that because, probably because of digital filmmaking now, yes. the, the, the one editor movie, at least action sequences, is probably on its way out. Really? Yeah. It's just because of the enormous amount of footage. Ah, okay, so this is... This it's is just physically, like I said, so you, it, it, you're, you're obligated, you have to go through this footage. It's, it's your job to make sure you're getting the best material. And it's just the amount of it is becoming daunting. There is something to be said, though, is that the best material becomes something that was second best the minute you put it in context. True. I, you I, can I, do that. I'm just I'm yeah. saying, like, you know, like you really think this take is not really that great, and then all of a sudden you're editing and you realize, no, I need a, right. you know, right. a different flow. I mean. Right. But you're saying still, regardless, you need to go through all the footage. That's like a lot. 
a lot of directors will make selects with the script supervisor. Right. And you, you've learned over the years that after they come in, it's like, why would you use that take? And I said, well, that was your select. He says, oh, don't listen to that. <laughs> they right. don't really want you to do that. You should really just look at all you the You got footage. it. I mean, you have to because you have to make a judgment. And plus, you know, I had a, a, one of the editors I worked for him when I was coming up, he had this saying, don't cut the script. A chimp can cut the script. Right. I said, well, a really smart chimp. <laughs> but he said, you know, that's not your job. Your job is to make it something other than what everybody's expecting. Right. To tell the best possible right. story. Oh, fuck. Forget that. We got... Cloverfield. Cloverfield. Yeah.